The towers are loaded and wired for implosion. A misstep from a trespasser could inadvertently detonate the explosives and bring the towers down without warning. Shot day. The two towers are chock full of explosives. Mark bets that the neighbor's legal challenges are too weak to delay the implosion. He bets right. The looming lawsuit passes. I think he probably uh, had his lawyer tell him that he'd pretty much go on his route because there's been no mention today about a temporary restraining order or a hearing related to same. So at this stage, we're, we're loaded, we're wired, we're ready to go. We literally could hook things up and have it on the ground in 15 minutes. The team is ready to put weeks of prep behind them. This is what Mark's plan looks like. The resort's hotel tower on the north side of the property will come down first. As the sequence begins, shaped charges destroy a series of vertical columns that support the I-beam steel lattice. The supporting steel lattice dips forward, dropping the I-beam and prying the structure up and over. Charges on multiple floors sweep towards the hinge row, knocking out support columns as they go. The lightly loaded hinge row blows out, allowing the columns to bend and the cables pull the wall over into the fall zone. Over at the parking complex on the south side, the plan will cut apart the three sections. The shear wall detonates. The front columns blast out and the elevator shaft will twist away from the building. Then delayed charges detonate, knocking out the supports of the parking area's waffle slabs. The waffle slabs begin to slide forward. The stairwell wall lands on top. This is Mark's perfect scenario. The police also have a perfect scenario. No injuries and no incidents. They have planned for over three weeks, and there are more than 35 officers on site for crowd control. The number one priority today, without, without saying, is public safety, OK? The areas I'm very, very, very concerned with are the balconies on both buildings. 